Hey everyone, Arcology's here. I wanted to go ahead and do a quick tutorial on how to create a 90s inspired ambient jungle or drum and bass pad using pretty much any sample that you have, uh, any kind of pad sound or atmospheric sample as a starting point. Grab whatever you got and we'll use that. I'm going to go ahead and use one of these pad sounds from uh, the Blue Martin sample pack. Uh, you can find that online, it's free. I'm going to be using Ableton, but you can use any DAW you want. I do this, and I do pretty much the same kind of uh, thing in Renoise um, all the time. So uh, I'm not going to be using any kind of fancy paid plugins. I'll be using all stock plugins for Ableton, except for Valhalla Supermassive, which is free, um, and it's an excellent reverb plugin. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So the first thing I want to do is create an instrument rack because what I want to do is um, create an instrument rack that I can save and uh, use in any kind of future project. So I'm dragging down an instrument rack into one of these empty MIDI tracks here. And in that instrument rack, I want to I want to use sampler. So in the sampler instrument, let's go ahead and click on this zone button here. And here you'll see all the samples that are going to be loaded and their key zones. So let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to use this greetings pad. I really like the way that sounds. It's pretty great. And so the first thing I want to do with these pad sounds is I want to loop them. And to loop it, I want to make sure I click this link button because what this link button will do, and you don't have to do this, but for for these for these specific pad samples, I want to use it. Um, so I'm going to click on link, and what link does is that it links your start sample start point to your loop start point. Yeah, and so for pad sounds and atmospheric sounds, I pretty much will always use the ping pong loop mode here. So I'm going to select that. And I want to go ahead and start it probably, I want to start it like probably around here, somewhere around here. And I don't want it to go the full duration of the pad. Um, one way to kind of um, get a little bit more original with these, these popular samples is to kind of just use a piece of the sample to create a pad sound. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, probably just, maybe just go up to here with it. Maybe right there. Let's see. So let's go ahead and listen to this as is. That's not too bad. Um, let's add a little bit of crossfade to make it a bit, a bit smoother. So let's go ahead and go over our return tracks. On return track A, I have Valhalla Supermassive. And I'm just going to go ahead, I'll reselect it. Um, I'm going to go to Reverb's Large Splashy Synth. I'm going to adjust, because it's on Ascent, it's going to be on Ascend uh, track, I want to go ahead and just make it 100% mix. And then down here, uh, this is a low cut. This is going to cut anything below whatever this value is on your re reverb. I, I want to get this up to like 5, 550, 560, or you know, somewhere around there. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't want to have anything below that in the reverb. It'll just kind of muddy it up. Um, and so I, I kind of just, you know, that's something I do. Yeah, and so that's pretty much all I would do for the Supermassive uh, preset here. So on the Echo, um, as we can see here, we have the delay divisions at a quarter. Um, they're synced. They're set to notes instead of dotted. The feedback is at about 67%. Um, I've got a high-pass filter here and a low-pass filter set up, so you can match these values if you want to kind of copy it directly. I don't have anything set with a... I'm not doing anything with modulation or character. So yeah, that's our delay. And if we send this to the delay and reverb, sounds pretty cool. But I want to adjust, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some macros to this. I'm going to go to the filter slash global, and I want to add I want to map the attack to macro one. I want to map the release to macro two. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to change this to attack. I'm going to change this to release. And I want to adjust attack to about maybe, I don't know. Uh, let's do, uh, let's see here. Let's go down to like maybe 200. Minutes. And we'll adjust the release to be pretty long here. And as far as the uh, MIDI up here, I mean, we're, we're essentially just pitching the chord up and down using the sampler. Cool. 
And also what I want to do is I will sometimes just throw a drum loop in here just for reference. So yeah, we've got the greetings pad here. Um, the next thing we want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the filter here. And what I really like to do for these 90s jungle pads is I like using the notch filter, or some people call it band reject filter. And I'll be honest with you, to me, this is like instant, instant 90s right here. And when you modulate this, it's even better. So let's go ahead and listen to it. So yeah, let's go ahead and adjust this a little bit. Let's do like 1.6, 1 1600. There we go. And we'll make this like, we'll just put it like right there. And we're going to be uh, modulating that with an LFO. I don't want the filter envelope. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's go into the modulation tab here in the sampler. Um, I want to adjust LFO 1. I want to apply LFO 1 completely to the filter here. And I don't want it to be super fast. Like if we listen to it right now with the default. Sounds cool, right? I want to go a little bit slower. I'm going to go like 0 0.10, 0 0.10, maybe 0 0.12. Let's do 0 0.12. Cool. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to add an, on LFO 2, I want to modulate the pan and the volume. So on LFO 2, I want it to sync to the to the clock. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little sync button. I want to make the time division uh, 1 8 notes. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. I'll make it a square, square wave. And I want to keep, um, let's do let's do volume. OK, so just to explain, you have your LFO here, and then these are your modulation destinations. Like, what do you want this LFO to affect? So we want to have it affect volume, right? So we're going to click here, and we're going to select volume for uh, destination A. And then for destination B, I'm going to go ahead and select panorama. Volume, I'm just going to make this drastic really quick so you can kind of hear what it's doing. So it's like gating it. And I mean, that's pretty cool if you if you want to go for something crazy. And if you, it's actually kind of cool if you go to like 1 32nd notes. This is kind of fun. Um, it's kind of experiment. I'm just doing 1 8th and I'm not going to have it too drastic, so I'm going to make it like maybe 10. Cool. And for panning, this is kind of the same way. I don't I don't like doing anything crazy. Let's just do it 100. And it's kind of nauseating. So we'll just do, we'll do it pretty low. We'll do like 5 or 6. Just nice and subtle. Just give it some movement. So yeah, it's kind of the pad we have going there with uh, the sample settings, right? So the next thing I want to kind of do is, um, again, all this is really to taste, and it depends what track you're, what you're doing with your track. But I'm going to go ahead and click on EQ8. I'm going to add an EQ to this, and I'm going to keep everything in the instrument rack because when I save it, I want all these to be included. So I'm going to, I'm not going to do, I'll do it like, well, okay. And so I'm just going to move this up too. I'm just going to, I like doing high passes on pretty much everything if I can. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to mix. Whoops. So I'm going to go, probably, well, let's do like one, 180 if we can. Let's do, that's fine. Uh, and then we'll just do some, we'll put a little bit of res resonance on it. Cool. Okay. And the next thing we want to add is the wonderful chorus effect here. So we're going to add a chorus and in the chorus, we want to go ahead and just use, um, let's see what it sounds like. The, the default might be OK. So you may want to have a lot of movement with your chorus. Um, I, I really like making everything subtle if possible. Okay, 
right, cool, I like that. Um, and so I'll just use those course settings there. And the next thing I want to add to this, and um, you know, again, because this is an instrument rack, we can kind of uh, adjust or add things to macros and stuff. I'm going to add a phaser. So I'm going to use uh, Ableton's phaser, which I also really love. I'm going to add that after the course, and I probably won't use both concurrently, but as you're adding things to this instrument rack, especially when you're adding more samples to it, um, you may want to use kind of phaser on one and course on another or something. So I'm just going to add it there. And for the phaser settings, um, I don't want it to be... I don't, I don't want it to be 100%. I'll probably make it like... Well... I want to add a little bit more kind of movement modulation to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to audio effects. I'm going to take an audio effect rack and I'm going to throw that in the instrument rack. And in this audio effect rack, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and show the chains and you do that by clicking this button here. And what I want to do is kind of, this is like parallel processing, right? So I want to have, um, I want to have an auto filter here. So I'm going to throw an auto filter in here. And then I just want to do a blank, uh, just a, a chain that doesn't have anything in it. So I have my auto filter chain here and my regular chain. And the way this works in Ableton is I have everything going through this uh, instrument rack into this audio effect rack where you can parallel process, right? And so in this chain, I'm going to go ahead and in this uh, first chain with the auto filter, this is where I want to have some movement. And so I'm going to have this filter here. Uh, kind of modulate with the LFO option. So let's see, let's do... Uh, um, because I'm doing it in parallel, this isn't gonna, you're gonna, because I have a an auto filter chain and another chain, it's gonna, I'm gonna get both, I'm gonna basically get a dry and a wet signal. And so you can, as I adjust the rate, you can hear it change, right? You can hear that. But you, but it's not as drastic. Like if I turn off, if I turn off the dry signal, you're just hearing the auto filter one. So let's go ahead and I don't want this to be too crazy. It's too like. And what I like to do here is also adjust volumes. So I don't want them to be. I want the movement to be kind of a little bit more subtle. Okay. So I'm kind of liking that. So yeah. That's kind of what I do for the ambient jungle pads uh, as a starting point. Um, again, you can use any sample that you want. Um, I'm using that greetings pad, but another cool thing is once you kind of have your your uh, instrument rack kind of set up, we can go in here. You can you can make your own macros, like uh, if you want to adjust, you know, some chorus functions and some uh, phaser, you can do that too. Or you can also kind of have some modulation uh, settings mapped to a macro if you want. Um, but once you have this instrument rack set up, it's really great because I can go in there and do it for. Let's do it for the let's do it for this uh, 31 seconds pad. Okay, so um, as you can see, I dragged this 31 seconds pad uh, wave file over to the the zone window. I don't want them both to play at the same time because it probably won't sound good. But this is an easy way also to layer pads. You can throw a sound in there that you've created that you kind of want to layer with a greetings pad, but you you know you want to run it to the sampler. You can do that as well. But um, if you want, if you just want to have a library of ambient jungle pads, you can just kind of add. We'll just here, we'll just do this. We'll just add like, we'll just add them all to this thing. Um, we'll just deselect all of these. So once I have all my pads in here that I want to kind of mess with, um, if I go to the, say the 31 seconds pad, I, I don't want it to loop the whole pad. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to link it, make it a ping pong loop. 
And then I'm just going to find a piece of this pad that I really like and use that. And then I'll add a little bit of crossfade. Pretty cool, right? And what you can also do is if you, as you're trying to kind of find a nice little loop point, once you get kind of changes in the volume here in the waveform, it's like, you know, its own mo modulation. And so once you find that, I mean, it, it, it is assigned to this sample, so I can kind of flip through all these samples and find nice uh, loop points. So if, let's go ahead and use this one here. As you can see, this one this, this has a chord change in it. And so we're going to just go ahead and link it. Let's do the same thing. We'll find a nice piece of this that we like. And, you know, um, I mean, it's, this is what you can do. And, and you don't, like, it can go beyond the Blue Martin pads, obviously. You can throw, um, you know, if you're also producing other types of music where you have pads for, if you're doing, like, just ambient music or even, like, techno or something, I, I mean, you can throw any kind of thing in this instrument rack and start finding loop points and, you know, different samples and adjusting the filter. And um, you, don't even have to, you can use bandpass filters are really cool, too. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, that's um, kind of a cook way to get, you know, that 90s uh, jungle sound. So yeah, uh, maybe you'll be encouraged to try this. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can also make your audio effect racks uh, way more complex if you want. Um, it really is just, this is one of the reasons I love Ableton over anything else. I just, I love making instrument racks and just kind of going from there. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys found it useful. Take care.